Welcome to Television Sydney News, I'm Christina Pollard, it's great to have you with us. In this week's bulletin, State Parliament votes against an inquiry into the redevelopment of Windsor Bridge, residents to rally against a radioactive waste dump at Kemp's Creek, and a Glenory baker backs the blues in the upcoming Pie of Origin. But first, a Parramatta mum has proved disability is no obstacle after finishing a 16-day fundraising ride from Melbourne to Sydney on a lawnmower. Megan Healy, dubbed the Mower Mum, crossed the finish line at the Westmead Millennium Institute on Wednesday as part of her bid to raise money for the Kiss Goodbye to MS campaign. The mum of three, who was diagnosed with the disease in 1998, raised more than $27,000. Mrs Healy uses a wheelchair but likes to ride around her property on a mower. She says her most memorable moments during the ride involved children. I had a little girl come up to me in the main street of Benalla and climb up onto the mower and give me a hug. And I had another little girl colour in a picture for me and write on the bottom of it, please get well soon. Mrs Healy says the idea behind the mow down was to get attention so people could see that those with MS could achieve anything. And 12-year-old daughter Sydney says she's very proud of her mum. It was really inspirational and shows anyone and us kids that if anything that you have, like a disability or anything, you can't be stopped, you just got to set your mind to it and you can do anything. The end of the ride was also the culmination of the month-long campaign from MS Australia, which has raised more than $480,000. I think for my next adventure, um, probably next May, I might ride a mower from Manhattan to San Francisco. I don't know. <laughs> State Parliament has voted against an inquiry into the redevelopment of Windsor Bridge. A motion calling for the inquiry was narrowly defeated in the New South Wales Upper House by 18 votes to 17 on Thursday. The opposition and a local community group called for the inquiry due to what they say are irregularities in the replacement bridge's approval process. Community Action for Windsor Bridge members expressed dismay in the decision because of the redevelopment's impact on historic Thompson Square. The group says the project will see a main road put straight through the square, which is the oldest in Australia. The new bridge will cost about $65 million. A rally against a proposal to dump radioactive waste at Kemp's Creek will be held at St Mary's next month. Lindsay Labor MP David Bradbury is funding the event and says residents fear the waste will find its way to Kemp's Creek from the former Hunters Hill Uranium Processing Plant. But Mulgoa MP Tanya Davies says the state government has already consulted with the public on the plan and Mr Bradbury is needlessly alarming residents. The rally takes place at St Mary's Memorial Hall on June 13. Paramedics have praised residents who helped during a horrific dog attack which left an Ashcroft man with serious injuries to his arms and chest. The 49-year-old was jogging along Maxwell Avenue last Sunday when he was mauled by three Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Paramedic Inspector John Brotherhood says the neighbour's quick reaction saved the man's life. The three dogs were put down on Monday afternoon and charges are expected to be laid against their owner. Parramatta River Ferry services were cancelled and visibility on roads affected after heavy fog descended over much of Sydney for several mornings this week. The pea soup was particularly heavy on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, but also caused transport delays on Thursday. The Transport Management Centre says fog was particularly thick over the M4, Richmond Road, Quakers Hill Parkway, Sunny Holt Road and Windsor Road, causing delays during morning peaks. Weather zone meteorologist Ben McBurney says high moisture levels had combined with light winds and cooler nighttime temperatures to blanket Sydney in the eerie white fog. Visibility was down to about 100 metres in much of western Sydney. Heavy fog also settled over Sydney south, almost obscuring the view to Oatley Bay from the Oatley boat ramp on Tuesday morning. Parents from North and South West Sydney whose children are fully vaccinated say the positives of the jabs far outweigh the negatives. The state government is considering legislation to allow preschools and childcare centres to ban non-vaccinated children. But the South West and MacArthur regions have among the highest rates of childhood immunisation in the state. Chipping Norton mother Stephanie Singh believes vaccination is important to protect and strengthen her three-month-old son's immune system. 
Camden mother Jessica Fordham is convinced it's the right thing to do, while Quakers Hill mum Belinda Williams says the vaccinations for all four of her children are up to date because a simple injection can prevent disability or even death. A reenactment trek marking 200 years since the first European crossing of the Blue Mountains was celebrated at Mount York on Tuesday. The largest civilian flyover in Australia's history was held over the mountains last Saturday as part of the bicentenary celebrations. 75 aircraft took to the skies in a two and a half hour spectacle to mark the crossing by Blacksland, Wentworth and Lawson in 1813. 500 locals then turned out for the Mount York event to watch the crossing party in period costume finish the 18th day of the trek that began in St Mary's on May 11. We've been at it 18 days and we have finally made it, you know, like it, it's absolutely tremendous. The original explorers first emerged at the Mount York Plateau where they viewed the Hartley Valley and realised its potential for the colony for the first time. The 21 day reenactment finished on Friday. Some of Australia's most successful businessmen and women are preparing to spend a night out in the cold in an effort to help the nation's homeless. Hundreds of chief executives from New South Wales will take part in the 2013 Vinnie's CEO Sleepout on June 20. They'll eat at a soup kitchen and meet homeless Australians face to face. NAD's chief executive Sue Ismail said she's doing the Sleepout for the first time to raise money for a cause close to her heart. I think that there are over 100,000 people um, that don't even have a roof um, over their head is really heartbreaking for me. Mrs Mail says she hopes to learn about the issue from Australians who survive on the streets every night. Obviously everyone sees the world through their own filters um, and I just need to know how big is this problem to them, the people on the streets of, of Australia. Andrea Galloway, the Chief Executive of Evolve Housing in Parramatta, says she's doing the sleep out for a second time to help change the face of homelessness. So you might walk um, and see a homeless person in the street, but you wouldn't know their story. But if someone could get up there and tell you the story, they could be any one of us at any point in time. The event's raised more than $13 million for Vinnie's homeless services since it began in 2006. Property owners were underpaid millions of dollars when their land was acquired for the South West Rail Link extension, according to a parliamentary investigation. Rural landowners were paid $85 a square metre for land valued at three times that amount. Pig farmer David Bly has spent thousands of dollars on legal costs to have his $2 million a year business included in the valuation. He says the valuation system needs to be changed. Part of a state heritage listed Aboriginal site near Blacktown has been rezoned for a residential and retail development by Blacktown Council. It includes land granted to Darragmen, Colaby and Nurragingi by Governor Lachlan Macquarie in 1816. But Indigenous groups have been critical, saying they've not been consulted and they want the cultural significance of the land to be addressed. The groups have disputed the site's ownership for decades. The council claimed a 2005 report for the nearby Stonecutters Ridge development had covered the site's Aboriginal heritage, but that report was discredited in 2011 when it was revealed there were no references to either Colaby or Nurragingi in it. A group of seven Camden residents have submitted a petition to State Parliament calling for the sacking of Camden Council. The move follows the Council's controversial sacking of General Manager Gray Wright last November, just one month after the local government elections. Camden resident John Southwell says he signed the petition because he was outraged by the termination of the General Manager's contract. Camden MP Chris Patterson, who tabled the petition, says he doesn't agree with it. Mount Druid artist Abdullah Syed will take on the Big Apple's well-established art scene with his culturally inspired works. Syed has been selected to show his latest exhibition, Brute Nama, at Icon Gallery in New York from July. Syed says breaking into the New York art scene has been one of the greatest feats of his career. The exhibition in New York uh, is important in my career because it will be one of the milestones um, that I was looking for and I only hope that it will propel my career further. Syed says he combines the word brute with different ideas of masculinity to create his works. The idea is to take um, this dry brute 
perfume bottle and the scent which has uh, become a very popular perfume in the uh, in 16s and 70s for men and still very popular among Pakistani men and take that um, and then try to present in an artistic form various, f various faceted facets of masculinities in Pakistan. Syed's artworks have been featured in exhibitions both at home and abroad. His latest works can be seen at the Blacktown Arts Centre in Some Other Place exhibition until the end of June. A charity phenomenon that started in Naples more than a decade ago has arrived in Sydney just in time to warm the hearts and stomachs of the less fortunate this winter. The suspended coffees movement is based on an Italian goodwill tradition where customers can buy an extra coffee which is then given to a person in need. The Bridge Cafe in Windsor is one of about 12 participating cafes in Sydney and owner Melanie Patterson says she's had positive feedback from customers help out the locals rather than sending you know we send a lot of money overseas and so forth so to help people in our own backyard just um, just really struck me as something that I'd like to do. The movement has spread all over the world and in some places you can order not only a coffee but also a sandwich or even a whole meal. Ms Patterson says she hopes it will challenge the stereotypes surrounding homelessness. There are also a lot of families that can't afford to live in the economy the way that it is now so there's a lot of you know, a lot of people that have just had a rough trot. She says just a few dollars and a small act of kindness can mean a lot to someone who's struggling. And in sport, popular Sutherland netball coach Maria Lynch is over the moon after winning the Coach of the Year award at the New South Wales Sports Federation 2013 Community Sports Awards. Lynch celebrated a fifth consecutive under 21 national netball championship title with the New South Wales team in March last year. She also steered Sutherland Shire to a grand final victory in the State League Waratah Cup last July and became an integral member of the New South Wales Waratahs in the Australian Netball League last September. A new partnership is kicking giant goals with Indigenous students. AFL club GWS Giants has teamed up with Lendlease to launch the Career Futures program as part of the Giant Community Footprint Partnership. The program encourages Indigenous students to finish school and then supports them in the transition to further education and employment. 40 Year 9 and 10 Indigenous students from Chifley College Shalvey Campus and Cranebrook High School are the first participants of the pilot program. Aboriginal artist and program ambassador Chris Edwards says young people will attend weekly sessions to gain life skills. I can see some of them are going to be leaders, future leaders, and some of them have career aspirations as high as being in the police officer and dance. So my hope for these kids, I hope, I know actually, I know, hope, I know they're going to grow up to be great little kids in the community and benefit the whole community, which is what they do. A Smithfield Junior Rugby League club was stripped of its supplies when its storage room was raided two weeks ago. Staff at St Gertrude's discovered the theft during a recent training session at Rossford Reserve. More than $2,000 worth of fundraising goods and sporting equipment was stolen. The non-profit club raises money during the year for its annual presentation day. It caters for 80 players aged from 4 to 11. And finally, a Glenory baker is so confident nothing goes together better than pies and footy, he started a state of origin for meat pies. Pie of Origin kicks off on Wednesday, the same day as the year's first State of Origin game. As the name suggests, it pits New South Wales against Queensland, but in a pie-off. You know, who can bake the most pies during the series and raise the most money for charity? Uh, this year we're raising money for a Bundaberg bakery that got washed out in the floods and uh, we hope to raise as much money as possible. New South Wales represented by Glenory Bakery and Queensland represented by Quinney's Pies in Ashmore will donate $1 from every pie sold during the competition to Nightingale Pies in Bundaberg. The bakery was washed out in the devastating Queensland floods in January. We're going to make uh, 12, 10 to 12,000 which will be an average of about uh, 1,500, 2,000 pie. Mr Perina says the colour of the jersey doesn't matter in this rugby league clash the important thing is to help a fellow Aussie baker in need. And that's all for this week's bulletin. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax community newspaper. I'm Christina Pollard. We'll see you next time.